Eric Vincent suggested I use these integrated chips to continue building more complex things. So these have built-in logic gates. There's a bunch of different kinds in here. I printed some data sheets that go along with them. I figured I'll start with an OR gate, which will be the easiest one. So that's an, a 74LS32. And in here, it seems to be this guy. So this is how he looks, 74LS32. He has all these pins. He looks kind of like a cute little bug. It should go straight into the breadboard. This must be the way. That went in pretty easily. I think I put it backward. So if we look at the pins that we have here, we can see inside that there's all these OR gates that we can access. So we have power at the top left and then we have ground at the bottom right. So I'm gonna set that up first. I don't know if I need to use resistors for this. I'm assuming it will tell me if I need to. It says max rating is seven volts. I don't see anything regarding resisting the input. A lot of this is still way over my head. I'm just gonna plug it in and see what happens. The top left seems to be VCC. So I'm just gonna plug that in. So that's power. And then the ground, the ground is here at the bottom. Now I am going to need to transfer the power from here to here. So positive can join here, negative here. Now we can start plugging stuff in, I think. This is one opera and this is another opera and this would be our output. So the bottom left will do two buttons that go in and then the output there. I guess I need to also now check what kind of power comes out. Is it gonna burn on my LED? Maybe what I should do is look up an example circuit online. All right, so I did find some stuff on the same website that I've used for some references, buildelectroniccircuits.com. So they put in power directly, ground, just go straight in. So this is pretty much how ours is set up right now. Here's an example circuit, perfect. Buttons go directly into the gates and they seem to be connected with pull down resistors to ground. And then the output is resisted before the LED, okay. Cool, and then it goes to ground. All right, so let's give that a shot. We need two buttons. Here's one button, here's another button. And then it says just to connect these to positive voltage. So let's hook these up. Normally I use res resistors for this, but I'm just gonna follow it. So there's one. Connect it into the gates, but we pull it down in, in parallel. R1, R2, R10Ks, okay. And I think that's what it was. Yeah, so R1, R2 are both 10Ks. So that's one. Power comes in, goes through the button. When we click it, then it can go out back to ground through the pull down resistors, or we need to create the alternate path, which goes to our operand inputs. I'm gonna move the chip closer. So our outputs, I have these two cables that I'll just use. So I have this uh, brown one, and then I have this yellow one. This should work. So for the first button, it's being energized all the time. When we click the button, it's able to go through the other side and it can go into that first pin and the second button, same thing, it's always powered. And when we click the button, it can go on the yellow cable into the second pin. And those first two pins are our OR gate inputs or the operand, we could say. And then the pull down resistor, I'm guessing just make sure everything is zero when we're not pressing the button. So when the button is, is not pressed, the current going into here is, is pretty much zero. It's always pulling it down to zero. And I think the whole point of this is to avoid floating input, which is what I've been told a lot. So now what we need to do is just get our output. There is a resistor on the output that goes to the LED. So I guess I'll try that. It's too bad that I can't just log in my LED. So here's a 1K. And I think this is set up. So let's plug in power and, and see what happens. Yeah, I don't think, oh, my power is not plugged in. Right, I didn't move the power or the ground. <laughs> I'm silly, okay. Okay, the ground can go in and then the positive can just move over. All right, let's give us a shot again. Plug in power. And if we press the button, that's on. That's on. Cool. So this works as an OR gate. Both of them should be on. It should make it be on. Awesome. So yeah, that's, I mean, it's pretty convenient. All we do is just hook up our buttons, which we would have had to do anyway. I'll try and get another OR gate working. So basically the next two are more inputs. And then number six next to the ground is our other output. Let's do the same thing and see if we get them working independently, just to make sure. Plug up my power. On this side, we could put in some buttons. Really what I should do is move then this LED over so it kind of is obvious that it's on this side. Let's put in another set of buttons. Here's the second input, blue. So if I put this button here, and I guess I could put this button right here into the yellow. Pretty much this will be the input side of this button. And then it goes, you know, over and then into the yellow. And this will be the input side on this button where we power it, we click it, and it goes on the blue. So there'll just kind of be a mirror image. So now we can connect our power here and connect our power here and these buttons should work. Okay, so our buttons both have inputs and now what we just need to do is get the imp the output. So in this case where the blue connects to this button and where the yellow connects to this one uh, and just tie them down with 10Ks. Okay, so we're gonna tie down the outputs to 10Ks. The idea being that when the button is not pressed, 
then the output of this cable is zero. It's not left kind of floating around. Okay, so we have same thing here, power coming in. It's pulled down to zero, but when it's pressed, it's able to go out this way and go in. So this blue cable is either gonna be a one, right? The, the power from the orange, so it's gonna be voltage, or it's gonna be zero because it's gonna have everything sucked out and put into the ground. So let's plug in power again and see if this works. Oh wait, I need my output. So the output is right here is the output. So we need to get another little 1K and put another LED in. So I'll put this LED here to ground and then we can put in a 1K. All right, let's plug in power and see. So this works great. It does work. We have two separate OR gates here. So that's uh, pretty cool. So we have this OR gate that we just used, but I also have these other ones, a D flip flop, and we have an AND gate. AND gate's really the one I'm thinking of trying. So if it's the same amount of pins and the same setup, then I should be able to just replace the chips and have it work as an AND gate. So let's try that out. So let's find our AND gate on here. It's a 08. So here's a 08. So it should be one of these. All right, let us say 08 there. So I'm plug up power. I'm gonna plug out the chip and then I'm gonna put in this chip and see if we could get this to flip into AND gates. Power on, lights off, press both, lights on. Look at that, that's pretty cool. So they do work uh, really easily, just kind of interchanging them because the logic gates, I guess, have the same pins. We have two inputs and an output and then two inputs and an output and the chips are just made in a way where we can put them in and out. So that's pretty cool. I think I have one more here that we can check, the not end gate. This one has the same pins, it looks like, right? Two inputs and output, two inputs and output. So this one is the number zero, zero. Let's see if we can find this one. Here's the zero, zero, 74, zero, zero. All right, let us say zero, zero there. Plug up power. Let's put this one in. All right, so now what I'm expecting to see are these lights turn on by default, right? Because it's an inverted AND gate, not AND gate. So let us plug in power and these lights should turn on. So three, two, one, the lights are indeed on. And if I press one of these, it should stay on, but if I press both, it should turn off. Perfect. Awesome. So yeah, these chips are really cool. Uh, thanks very much, Eric, for the suggestion. We can see how we can very easily build a, an exclusive OR type functionality here. Now, of course, we're gonna have chips that have the exclusive OR function built into them. But if we were building something out of these logic gates, then it'd be really easy to connect them together. One thing I don't like is that the outputs here, we still need these resistors, which is sort of a bummer. It'd be very convenient if I could just plug it in. Let's take another look at the paperwork and see. Well, you know, instead of doing that, I guess what I should just do is, is just, I could just take a reading, right? So I'm gonna plug out my power, plug out this resistor, plug out this LED. I'm gonna make a negative terminal post right here just to make it easy. So this is our negative. You can see it sticking up so I can easily grab it with my meter. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the output of this gate. So we had the LED here before, but I'm just gonna put a cable pointing upwards that we can easily grab onto. Right, so we have the output here, the raw output without any resistance, and then we have a ground here. And what I'm thinking is we can just check the actual current that's happening there and see if it's resisted, uh, because I can't really tell. And the example schematic has a 1000 ohm resistor, so I'm not really sure what's going on. The power source that I have has a maximum amperage, I think of two amps, so 2000 milliamps. So I'm gonna set it to this 10 here, uh, just a maximum to make sure everything is prepared for a lot of current. I'm gonna plug in power. So we know that this output should be hot by default, right? Because we have a not end gate. So we see this other one is on by default. And now I'm just gonna attach my terminals and see what kind of current we have. We have straight zeros. Now I think I need to move this over. Let us plug this out, plug it in there. And I'm still getting a zero here. Oh, I have this into the wrong slots. My negative is not in negative, it's in the positive. So let me change this. All right, so now let's turn this on to 10 amps. Okay, so it seems that we have 0 0.05 amps, which is, 50 milliamps is it? So I'm gonna turn this down to 20 milliamp range and put this one back over because I think this is a lower amperage reading. And let's see what we get here. We get a one. Does that mean it's over? Let's move this up to 200 milliamps. And we do indeed get 50, near 50 milliamps. So it seems that there is resistance coming out of there. It's not just the raw power from VCC coming out. And I don't think I need to put a resistor on there with 50 milliamps, but let me check the box with the LEDs. So this is what came with them and it does say 20 milliamps. I guess having 50 milliamps would be a problem. Yeah, because they want 20 milliamps. So we do need to reduce it slightly, which is kind of lame. So anyway, so this is a nice little introduction for myself into these little chips. Really convenient. 
and we'll see what we can make with them. What I'll probably do is continue the series on memory cells, the T flip-flop and JK flip-flop, I think they were, and just use these chips with them. But really, really cool. And of course, you know, we built all of those logic gates from scratch, which I think earns us the, I guess, a privilege of using these. You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to sort of build everything with discrete components. And then if we can take shortcuts to get to more advanced components, and I think I'm open to doing that. So thanks again, Eric. Really cool. And I'm going to look at what else we have in this kit and see what we can use in the future.